Thank you, Director Nelson, for your testimony, and the chair recognizes himself for five minutes. Uh, Administrator Nelson, it was recently reported that NASA is considering changing the mission profile for Artemis III. The mission scheduled for September of 2026, which is currently intended to land humans on the lunar surface. The potential change in profile would result in a mission where astronauts do not land on the lunar surface, but rather remain in low Earth orbit. Is NASA actively considering an alternative uh, mission profile for Artemis III? What's going on, Mr. Administrator? Mr. Chairman, uh, this is part of our commercial program, and SpaceX is signed up uh, to uh, land in September of 26. Uh, next year, September of 25, uh, we are going to launch a crew of four, three Americans and a Canadian, and they will test out the spacecraft, and it will circle the moon and come home. Uh, a year after that, SpaceX is signed up to provide a lander where we would go into a new kind of orbit, uh, a polar orbit, a irregular uh, or elliptical orbit, and uh, the crew will transfer into the lander. Now, that is what is provided in the contract. The article that you're referring to uh, is speculation. Well, what happens if they're not ready? Well, naturally, people think about these things. But the plan is to land, and it would be uh, two astronauts of the crew of four that would get into the lander and go down and land. And I, I might say, think about the Apollo program and the Artemis program Artemis III, the first lander that SpaceX is contracted for, is the equivalent of Apollo 9, Apollo 10, and Apollo 11. So it's a, it's a very accelerated program. Very much so, Mr. Administrator. The 2023 decadal strategy for planetary science suggested a total cost of $5.3 billion for the Mars sample return. Significant increases to that estimated cost have triggered several project reviews, including NASA's ongoing efforts to reassess the program. As NASA reconsiders the approach for the Mars sample return, is NASA still targeting a total of project cost of $3.5 billion? 3.5 is unrealistic, but I pulled the cord on it, Mr. Chairman, about two weeks ago because the independent review boards had said the cost was going up to $11 billion, and it was very possible that we were not even going to get the sample back until 2040, and that's just simply unacceptable. And so what I did was I said, I want to go out to all NASA centers, which includes the Jet Propulsion Laboratory. I want to go out to industry, which we now have done with a request for information to come up with new ideas. By the way, uh, I checked in yesterday with the uh, head of the Jet Propulsion Laboratory on how their ideas are, and they are quite excited about coming up with new ideas that can bring that cost down and also get that sample back earlier. Well, certainly we wait with enthusiasm to hear those. One last question, Mr. Administrator. In October, the President submitted a domestic supplemental request to Congress requesting funding for a U.S. deorbit vehicle to safely decommission the ISS, as well as funding to help rebuild the NASA facilities in Guam 
and at the Armstrong Flight uh, Research Center. Uh, Congress has not passed the supplemental appropriation package yet to date. Is the funding for the Guam hurricane package included in NASA's FY25 budget request? Uh, no, sir. It is just like the Department of Defense. Uh, that request for the Guam dishes uh, is a uh, request in an emergency supplemental because that was as a result of a typhoon. Uh, our request is $400 million of which we have been cutting and pasting and chewing gum and bailing wire uh, as an interim solution. And our uh, request pales by comparison to DOD. DOD is something like $2 billion uh, request. Ours, $400 million. But also in that request is the request for the funding for the deorbit vehicle. Why is it an emergency? And it shouldn't be in the regular uh, request for appropriations. Because we don't know what Vladimir Putin's going to do. Uh, we built the International Space Station with the Russians. We operate it with the Russians. We have had no hiccup whatsoever with the Russian cosmonauts, nor Moscow uh, Mission Control and Houston Mission Control, of which we have both Russians and Americans in both. Uh, we do an integrated crew on the Soyuz. There's an American astronaut on the Dragon. There is a uh, Russian cosmonaut, and uh, but we don't know what the president of Russia is going to do, and we could be in an emergency situation that we have to get this structure that is as big as a football stadium down and down safely in 2031. And that's why I'm making the request and I'm pleading to you all in the Appropriations Committee to put that in the emergency supplemental bill that will be coming up later. How much money are we talking about, Mr. Administrator, for the deorbit vehicle? For fiscal year uh, 24, 180 million. For the total cost over six years, it's going to be a billion and a half. Okay. My time's expired.